Here we go, back to back Welsh fighters. Next up, we welcome to the UFL, Yayan the Lion Mackenzie, 22 years of age, from Cardiff, Wales, representing Dogs of War and the Craig Ewers Academy. Listen, this is another guy who started only just seven years ago in mixed martial arts. Somebody who has claimed multiple belts on the Welsh, on the UK scene, and now is making his move to professional. Earned his first victory. He's looking for his second one here. Interestingly enough, Frank, this is his first time of legitimately making the bantamweight. So as a pro, this is the division he thinks he can thrive in. He's got the size, the skill set for. And when you look at his team around him, it's been so nice to see how his coaches have been, you know, almost fathering him, looking after him, making sure that he's got everything he needs. So all he has to worry about, quite literally, is making the weight, making the walk, and then doing what he does in, inside this cage. Now, it's all great to be able to have coaches allow you to, as the athlete, as the fighter, focus at the task in hand, which is a highly stressful task. But sometimes you don't have the proper structure around you. You're worrying about other things, other people's feelings, emotions, thoughts, concern. And it can be very distracting. McKinsey has nothing about that to worry about. Started out as a judo kid back you know, in the day, and then use that as a foundation to grow into the other martial arts. But extremely well-rounded, and also an area that he's actually good at that you don't see a lot anymore in MMA. He's dangerous from his guard. A lot of guys, if you take them down to get between the legs, they're gonna tie you up and hold on and look for referee stoppage. Uh, McKenzie's the type of guy that if you get into his guard, you better be prepared that he's throwing up submissions. He's gonna try to take your arm off, slap a triangle on. He's gonna be a threat from there, not just looking to get a stop, uh, a start up. So Wales is number two, second fire, I should say, inside the cage. Let's welcome his opponent from Nashville, Tennessee. Boom! He has a pro record of one and oh as well, but look, again, it would be deceiving. His combat sports career, and there we go, is made up of a huge Muay Thai background, and he uses it so well, Frank. His balance within the clinch, his elbows, even working strikes from weird angles that you will only get from that Muay Thai stance. He really does embody that into his MMA game. He's made a pro debut in mixed martial arts, won that by decision. Now that was a split decision and his issue once again was coming up against somebody wanting to grapple him. We will find out tonight if he has learned from that lesson, from that fight. He, he managed to get the split decision win in that last one. But he's coming up for my money against a, a much more well-versed and dangerous grappler. But this is the game, right, Frank? Find out what your weaknesses are, learn from them make you know your weaknesses your strengths and then evolve every time you step inside that cage yeah, you know, that's the one thing that he's going to have to have done in practice, and we'll see now how much improvement he's made, is that obviously Boone doesn't want the fight to go to the ground. He wants to keep it in the striking range where he feels the most level of success. So when you spar, he's going to try to keep people from taking that, which sharpens that skill set. The problem that I see a lot of guys make with that, if I'm coaching a sparring class, you could be halfway through the round, then I'll yell, stop. Fighter A, lay on your back. Fighter B, get on top. Start from there now. I force fighters to be in bad positions during live sparring so they have that competitive nature of wanting to win. Sometimes when you're just drilling positions and learning, going over, well, how do I get out of this? You have to have the same mindset, same detriment, same intensity. So that becomes a problem. So when you have guys that don't want to become, you know, I don't want to grapple, I'm like, that's fine, but we're going to have to because guess what? Tonight, he's going to be grappling. So let's have a look at the tail of the tape between these two, USA versus Wales. 29 versus 22 height and reached, well, they'll reach the same height, slightly on the same side of Trafel Boone. He missed weight slightly as well by point four. We are set, we are ready for this bantamweight contest. Let's hand it to Cyrus Feet. And now, ladies and gentlemen, three five minute rounds in the bantamweight division. Introducing first the fighter on my right, fighting out of the blue corner. He's at five foot seven inches tall, weighing in at 135.4 pounds. His record one win and zero defeats. Fighting out of Cardiff, Wales. I give you Yaya Fallen McKenzie. And now his opponent, standing across.
across the cage, fighting out of the red corner. Standing five foot eight inches tall, weighing in at 136.4 pounds. His record, one win and zero to beat. Fighting out of Nashville, Tennessee. I give you Trapel Merchant. Your referee, Jason Aldridge. Jason Aldridge, the third man inside the UFL cage. This is our feature bout on our preliminary card. We move into the Grand Prix bouts. After this on our main card, Yayan the Lion McKenzie, sporting the Welsh flag on his shorts in the blue corner, taking on Travel Boone. Black and gold shorts, red corner. Travel Boone, that one on a record, Frank. If you just look at that and you don't take into account his Muay Thai, that's a mistake, right? He has had so many Muay Thai fights. And then you look in his corner, we talked about learning about grappling. Dustin Ortiz in his corner, an outstanding grappler, outstanding mixed martial artist in his own right. So you know, you, even just looking across the cage at that corner, he's got the right people to impr improve him in the areas where people might class him as, you know, their, as the weaknesses. And right there, the great head inside single ran the dump. McKenzie did, but good position there for Boone. Drove the head down, got his hips to the mat, was able to get his knees under him and slide back up. He was trying to create a frame right there. See how he's trying to push the head, McKenzie off, and get his hips out of there. McKenzie's driving hard with that underhook. he reconnect his hands. Great exchange. And that's a good moment there for Boone. A great confidence. Okay, I got taken down, but I got back up. Problem is, you don't want to have to do that too many times because it's energy sapping. You know, to shoot, uh, you know, to shoot on somebody to take them down unsuccessfully takes energy. But to take someone down and hold them down, and they got to fight their way back up to their feet, take that all day long. That's why you see again another shot because he's like, okay, I'll take this shot. And going for the guillotine probably wasn't the best move. It's only. <laughs> and he's still holding on to it. He's going to get Von Flute here. Oh, he yep. There he comes, guys. The Von Flute. Wow, look at this. He's, he's almost got his hand out. If he doesn't get his hand out of there, he's going to get choked out. Oh, he's managed wow. to free that out, but that was trouble. And this is another thing that Yaya McKenzie brings. It's pressure, Frank. Pressure all day long. He can come at you and make it this type of fight. And he's driving for the mount. Oh, he's going to get swept up. Oh, great timing on Boone's part. He got mounted. And smart, didn't engage on the ground. As soon as he had a top position, a lot of guys would have sat there and tried to get it back. Instead, he realized, no, this is an opportunity for me to get back up to my feet, get this where I have the best chances for success. And that has already seen improvements from his last fight from Boone. Yeah, no, I was really a tough one. The only part right now, he doesn't really sprawl. You know, he sits there and he raps and he's doing a good job on all the other defenses, but you know, he has too much confidence in that guillotine. And here he's doing a great job once he's back against the cage. But in the open area, you don't see how he doesn't fire the hips back as McKenzie's taking a shot on him. Oh, yeah, that was beautiful. McKenzie. Again, just that pressure. Yes, here he, he wraps over. I don't like that. As far as there we go, and I like that switching to the underhook. If he can draw that up again, just turns the corner. Then Mackenzie, really good work again, passing. Great top pressure. And he's holding that half guard on top, which is making it harder for Boone to get back up to his feet. It's almost better if he does pass for Boone. I know that sounds counterintuitive to a lot of people, but now his hips are free, but now his shoulders are being trapped, oh, working for the beatdown position. position. Super strong. He nice ghost corner. escape. About to give up his back, though. Oh, he's going for this. Oh, oh my deep. goodness, Yaya yeah. McKenzie. Yeah. When we get back to back, Welsh we make it chokes. We do. The Lion claims his prey once more. Yaya McKenzie with the finish. Wow. Unbelievable stuff. I reckon Wales is rocking right now. Johan with the victory prior to this, and now Yayan. 
I reckon they go to the same dance school as well, Fred. What do you think? <laughs> I'm not going to criticise you. And if really. anything, I'd spend more on the dance teacher, right? Yeah. That's the grappler's <laughs> working great. We need to fire the dance coach. <laughs> oh, look what it means to that young man as well. Making the trip over here, embracing everything that comes with it. A phenomenal job on the grappling tenacious and even didn't get discouraged twice boone and on boone's part i know that there's you know like you know a loss is a loss but seeing what he's done successfully he was able to get back up to his feet on one takedown through purely working up from the cage on the other one he was able to sweep from the mount to be able to avoid and got up out of the guard you know on the third attempt you know because he showed his abilities and made us some adjustments and was able to make sure he didn't get back up to his feet. But great fight. And a great night for Wales. The tongue is out, but let's get a hand raised. Let's hand it to Cyrus Lee. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Jason Aldrin stops this fight at 3 minutes, 45 seconds of round number one. You're going to attempt out to the rear Yeah, yeah. There we go. Two victories for Wales inside the UFL cage. Let's see how it was done. Frank, talk us through this. They're a great timing. Drop down McKinsey did on that hit inside single, ran the dump. And there you see where Boone was trying to lock up the guillotine on the second takedown. You hear the third time when Boone went to get back up to his feet, he was doing a ghost escape. That inside underhook was sweeping out, but McKinsey was able to drop down that left leg on top of it to keep his hips from completely rotating through and then was able to lock on that rear naked choke for a phenomenal finish, and his choke was tight. I'm actually surprised Boone didn't immediately tap to it. He's a tough guy. He took that till he was about to lose consciousness. 